Hi, this is Paula from CHNE. I was in Mabu on Saturday to bring you images and sounds from the anti racism rally that took place. Here's my report, followed by speeches that guests gave at the protest. A peaceful rally, a crowd of over 150 people getting ready to listen to indigenous and black speakers open up about being at the receiving end of racism. On everybody's mind, Rodney Levi, a Mi'kmaq man from the Metapaganiach First Nation, who was killed by the New Brunswick RCMP just hours before this protest. Levi was the second indigenous person to be killed by the police in the Maritimes in the last two weeks. Chantel Moore was shot during a wellness check on June 4th. Indigenous leaders say, we can't keep going this way. For many, many years, we lost relationships, partnerships, friendships, and racism is something that has to be addressed, and it's been here for many, many years. And it's time to take a stand. Protesters say, we can all make a difference. Stopping racism doesn't always have to be in grand gestures. Like, yes, coming to protests and doing this type of activism is important, but it can also be in the small everyday things. Like if you have a relative who expresses racist views, you have to interject and uh, combat that because a person of color may not always have the safety to do so. It's not going to be one grand thing that makes systemic racism stop. It's going to be everyday gestures. The Mabu protest wasn't the only one going on this weekend. There was another one in Port Hawkesbury that gathered about 70 protesters. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Don Delia Nocte. People heard from speakers, music, and took a knee to commemorate George Floyd. Have a listen at the complete speeches from the Mabu protests on Saturday. Hi everyone! Thanks so much for being here today. We really appreciate seeing this great crowd here. It's so important. Uh, before we get started, just wanted to talk about a couple things. Wanted to uh, just give everyone a, a reminder, like they need it, that we do have a pandemic going on. So we please ask everybody to remain six feet or two meters apart from anyone not in their family bubble. So if everybody could do that. And, and please feel free to come closer to the stage as well, if you'd like. Um, we also have a station set up over here where we have masks uh, that you can borrow if you don't have a mask. We ask everyone to, to wear one, although it looks like everyone I see has one, which is excellent. Thank you so much for doing that. We have gloves, we have hand sanitizer. We do also have a first responder uh, here, and just in case anything is needed, hopefully it won't be, but uh, just, just for safety purposes. And also wanted to give a huge shout out to all the folks in their cars participating. So we've got a, ro a few rows of cars up here of folks that are participating. So maybe we could give a, a shout out to those guys. Woo, thank you. Awesome. And we have a few more down in the other lot as well, so that's great. Thanks for joining, guys. Uh, also, would love to do a shout out to Facebook. We know that we have a lot of people watching live right now from the Mabu Facebook page, so thank you all for joining. We really appreciate that. Uh, so great to see all the support. Uh, this community is really getting behind this, and we appreciate that. Um, one other little note that I wanted to let you know, we unfortunately don't have any washrooms um, that are available at, at this time, so we're not going to keep you here too long, so hopefully that won't be an issue, but just wanted to let you know if anyone was wondering. So thank you so much for coming. Since the beginning of the COVID quarantine, police have killed more than nine Indigenous people in Canada. And that doesn't count the people who were attacked with force but not killed, like we've seen with the horrifying video of Chief Adams from out west that was leaked just a couple of days ago. It's continuous, and it has to stop. Each and every one of you has taken an important step by being here today. But it's just the first step. We need to work together to affect change and support our black and indigenous communities. We need to educate ourselves about the injustices they face, from microaggressions to systemic racism to violent acts of racism. We're going to learn more about the steps that we can take to be true allies today. Uh, so we're gonna hear more about that a bit later. And we have some incredible community leaders here today 
and we're so excited for you to hear from them. Before we do that, I would like to call your attention to the yellow donation buckets that you may have seen uh, at our stations, our sign making stations. And by the way, if anybody is looking for a sign, we do still have lots of leftover signs there that you can, you can take. Um, so these donation buckets are because St. Philip's African Orthodox Church in Whitney Pier needs our help. This historic church and its congregation have provided incredible support to the black community in Cape Breton. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, its largest fundraiser of the year can't occur. Uh, so they definitely need our support right now. In order to ensure it can continue to do the great work that it does, we are accepting donations. And so please, we ask that you donate what you are able. If you don't have cash with you, or if you're watching from home, we do have a GoFundMe link, and you can find that on our Facebook page. Or please, you know, get, just get in touch with any one of the organizers, and we can, we can guide you there. So thanks to those who have already donated. We've had a lot of generous donations so far. So thank you so much to all of you who have done that. And again, anyone else who can please donate, we would greatly appreciate it. OK. So next I want to move on to something really important, and that is a land acknowledgment. It is important to remind ourselves once again that we are gathered here in Mi'kmaq territory. Mi'kmaq have been here since time immemorial, taking care of these lands and each other for over 14,000 years. They took care of our ancestors too when they landed here with nothing. Especially as we do the work of anti-racism, we need to remember that these lands are governed by the treaties of peace and friendship which were signed between Mi'kmaq and the Crown in the 1700s. These treaties established the framework for good and friendly relations between the original people and the newcomers. They did not deal with the surrender of lands. In fact, at no point in history did Mi'kmaq people cede or surrender their lands in any way. And the treaties are still binding legal documents today. These land acknowledgements are becoming familiar now and they have been criticized by many for being empty words. Sort of like if I took your cell phone without asking, acknowledged it's yours, but then kept it. So let this land acknowledgement not simply be a routine bunch of words that we say at the beginning of an event. Let it be a call to action for all of us to learn about the peace and friendship treaties and to reflect deeply about how we can hold up our end of those treaties in our day-to-day -day lives and with all of our relations here in Unamaki. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Joanna. And uh, I just wanted to say I'm not, I wasn't supposed to be speaking right now. This wasn't the order that we had planned when we, uh, when we set this out. Um, it was supposed to be the Wekogamaki Wisk, the women of Wekogama drummers, to sing the honor song to start in a good way for our gathering here. And the honor song is really beautiful. It talks about um, honoring, respecting ourselves as human beings and respecting each other as human beings and doing what we were put here to do by Creator and living in that way. And they were planning to come, which I think is a really big thing, and I want to recognize the folks who are here from Wekoba um, and other communities because I think it's, uh, it's not necessarily an easy thing to come to an event like this. Um, so I want to recognize that and say thank you for being here. We were really grateful that the Wekoba Magiwisk were, were willing to be here to sing for us. But since the events of last night, with the police in Miramashi killing Rodney Virk, all of Mi'kma'ki is mourning today, and they decided that they needed to be with their people in Membertu, where there's a walk um, and ceremony going on there. So let's just, as we go into this, it's great the energy that we're here, but let's remember also that the, like this is, none of this is theoretical. <laughs> This is all real, and it's all painful, uh, and it has been painful for a long time for the communities that have been on and continue to be on the, the receiving end of racism. So big, big gratitude 
to all of you who are here, for those of you who, especially those of you who do experience racism, um, because it, 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 we have so much work to do as communities to build relationships with each other and to heal the relationships that have been broken so many times. So just knowing that the communities are hurting and grieving today and, uh, and we wanted to start in that way, we didn't, we, they aren't able to be here today. Um, but for anyone else who's here um, who, would like to, who would like to speak on behalf of their community or themselves, um, we, you know, our schedule has already changed. <laughs> we, wanna, we wanna have that space, um, especially for Mi'kmaq and African Nova Scotian voices in this space. Um, so I won't take any more of the t air time as a white woman, um, but I just wanted to honor the, the drum group and their offering a, of, uh, and their willingness to be here and the people who are walking for Chantal Moore and who are mourning Rodney Virk today, um, the folks who are at the event in Member 2 and many other events. So um, let's keep them all in our hearts today. Thank you. Um, hello uh, and how are you? My name is Don Beaton and I'm from Mabu and uh, pleased to be a part of this, um, this important event uh, for all of Inverness County. Um, we are here in solidarity with hundreds of thousands of people around the world who are standing up and speaking out against, against racial injustice and police brutality everywhere. We all have a lot of learning and work to do, and that includes us as organizers. So, as mentioned, we aren't going to speak very much, but we do want to give the space for those voices and those impacted by racism to speak here with us today. We hope you will all join us here and through Facebook, listening respectfully to what they have to say. So our first speaker, is Darnell Curtin from Whitney Pier, who was one of the organizers in the rally in Sydney last week that drew over 1,000 people. Hi, guys. So uh, as she just said, I'm from Whitney Pier, and I organized the protests there last week with uh, a great turnout. So I want to thank all you guys for showing up here today and showing your support. It means a lot to me. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a little speech here. So first off, I'd like to thank the different communities here today and the media for supporting this cause because we're all in this together. It's mentally draining and overwhelming seeing people of color being killed senselessly day after day, year after year, generation after generation. My only fear is, will I be next? Don't be naive or ignorant to think that what happens in America doesn't affect people of color everywhere. In my community, we have a saying, it takes a village, and when one hurts, we all hurt. It affects us all. Racism exists in Canada, period. You may not see people of color being gunned down daily in the streets, but racism is here, and I can't stand by and do nothing anymore. I also think it's important to note that when I say people of color, I mean everyone of color, including black, Mi'kmaq, Asian, Middle Eastern, Latino, etc. And I keep seeing lots of people ask, why protest? Why march? My response is, why not? But just to clarify, this is why we march. For the past, for the present, for the future, to be heard, to take a stand, for the voiceless, and for those who died. I want you guys to remember that we're all here today, which means we all care. Today we stepped up, and I'm asking you to step up every day after this. You don't see injustice every day. You don't see injustice every day, or even if you do, please speak up each time. I'm black every day, and I'm tired of not speaking up. If we let people know that racism isn't welcome, they won't bring it to us. I ask that you promise me to check people 
when you hear racism or see injustice. Now I'd like to finish this by reading a poem that my good friend Robin Martelli wrote when she was in grade seven. And uh, she made it, she changed it a little bit to make it more relevant to today. Who am I? A black man who no one sees? I'm a black man just trying to be free. Free from discrimination, incarceration, poverty. Free, just let me be free. Free from stereotypes and mental slavery. Free, will I ever be free? Am I supposed to be ashamed? Will I get blamed just because I am a black man? Quick to label me a thug because of the color of my skin. But did I ever really have a chance to live? Bang, another brother shot down, a lifeless body on the ground. Bloodshed is a part of our roots. Flashbacks to Billie Holiday singing strange fruit. But we're not hanging from trees. We're being killed in the streets, filmed for millions to see. The police killed me. And my last words were, I can't breathe. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you for coming out today. All right, we're going to continue on this important learning. Our next speaker is Sila Best, who has traveled also from Sydney today to speak with us. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight and for supporting us. So I just want to take a moment and pass on my condolences and my support to our indigenous people. Sorry, this makes me upset who have lost so many lives senselessly in the last few days. I want people to understand it's really important you cannot stand with us and say black lives matter and then kill other people of color. That does not jive, we have to stand together. So I grew up in Whitney Pier. It's a very multicultural community. And I had the pleasure of knowing many amazing people but it didn't save me from seeing racism. George Floyd, for us, it wasn't a wake up call. He was just another name. For us, it was another person senselessly killed because of hate and racism. It was a different name and a different storyline, but the same. When we take our children out, which is where it comes with us, and where I'm gonna speak to you, when I heard Mr. Floyd, I heard my son and saw my children. And that is a very realization for us. Because for us, we can't tuck our babies away and pretend racism doesn't happen because they are gonna walk out into a world where they are gonna come face to face with it head on and at small ages. My daughter was nine when she came crying because somebody was gonna hate her because of the color of her skin. And there is no privilege in being able to lie to her about it because I would not be doing my job as a parent in supporting her and having her ready for this world. She's lucky because many people of color have to come to this realization at a really young age. We don't get the joy of being able to protect our kids from it. We have to prepare them from it. Sorry, prepare them for it. So. I have to decide as a parent, along with all of the other horrible things that are out there, when is the right time to prepare my child? Because my son will eventually go from be being a beautiful little boy to a big, scary black man. And our daughters eventually go from being big, beautiful daughters to another statistic on somebody's desk. So we don't get this privilege of just hiding away from it. We have to prepare them at young ages. And that is where you come in as our allies and our support because we cannot do it alone. We cannot fight racism alone and we can't change this world alone. And we can stand up here and scream as much as we want, but without strong allies like everybody here today, nothing changes. 
So what you can do as an ally, don't just be passive against racism. You can stand strong, you can stand loud, and you can fight against injustice. That's how we change it, one person at a time. That's how we make it so that the next generation isn't coming face to face with it. It can eventually just be something they read about in a history book. The other thing that we need to understand is that pain can do two things. It can stop us in our tracks or it can propel us forward. We don't need to be going forward with hate anymore. It didn't work. We need a better way. So I employ every one of you, when you see a racist act happening, regardless of whether it's a black person or a person of other heritage, other ethnicity, our indigenous people, you need to stand up, stand loud, and support them so that when they're vulnerable and when they're scared for their lives, they know who it's safe to run to. Thank you very much. Next speaker, who is Stephen Gugu, and he is band, band counselor and respected community leader from Wagama. Please welcome Stephen. You forgot to mention the elder. CBC um, called me an elder on Radio Live, and I felt so honored. And I didn't want to be rude to correct, but. There's a couple messages I want to bring forth to clear the ear. Um, one of them is, I strongly believe, after last night's incidents, not all police forces are bad. There's so many organizations and positions in this world that have a lot of bad apples, and we sh it's not fair to blanket everyone under that same category. Two, is it doesn't matter what color you represent on a medicine wheel. It doesn't matter if you're red, white, black, or re red. We all have to work together in today's world to move forward. And as a First Nations leader, as an indigenous person, I'm, I'm, I'm all for relationships. And to prove that we're all for relationships, it was our ancestors that signed treaties with your ancestors that enabled us to live together in Nova Scotia as people. We are all treaty people, not just Mi'kmaq. I'm also here to say that racism does exist in Canada. It's something you don't have to research. It happens every day. It's something you don't have to look in America to see. It happens in our backyards. In the past six weeks, or 10 weeks, three months, we had nine indigenous people shot down by police forces across this nation. It's very tough every day to hear it, to feel it, because as indigenous people, we're communities. We all live together. We all live 20, 20, 30 feet away from each other. We all know each other. And to lose someone like that really hurts. Not, I can never imagine how those families feel. We're, we're very lucky. Wegoma has never had such an incident. But I pray and I feel so bad for the family of Rodney Levi who was shot down last night in Red Bank First Nation. That really hurts. And one thing that's really hard to wrap our heads around, as First Nations people, in 2014, you had a Caucasian male of Justin Bork, who shot six RCMP, killed three in Moncton, and he got out of that alive. Yet, two weeks ago, you have a 26-year-old female indigenous woman shot down, not just shot, 
five times. Shesh Yo shot down five times on a wellness check. <laughs> and, and that hurts. Last night we had another incident. Rodney Levi was shot in Red Bank First Nation twice. And yet you had a Caucasian male an inmate that escaped from Pictou prison that was put in there for aggravated assault, attempted murder, and assault with a weapon, and he was brought back alive. And to understand our pain, we don't have answers to that. We don't know why that happened, but as First Nations people, that's what we see. And that's why we're, we <laughs> excuse our Facebook posts and social media, but we have nowhere else to put it. And a lot of our people are hurt. And a lot of them are angry. And I really, really acknowledge you guys for coming today. I really it makes it so much easier to see we're not standing alone. As an indigenous person, I had to endure racism growing up. It wasn't it was not easy. I remember there was times when I didn't want to wear my name bar on back of my jersey because I was scared to be identified, ridiculed, bullied, and it really hurt. I used to plead with my father not to put my name bar on my last, on my jersey. And he always thought I was ashamed of being Mi'kmaq. I was never ashamed of being Mi'kmaq. I was scared of the outcomes and the resistance that came with it. And it, it, was, it was my fault too. I was silent. Growing up, I was a silent person. I took all that racism and I endured it. I took it in, I didn't say anything, I just hid. And that's why back, back in fall, when young Logan Prosper took a stand, him and his family, I really acknowledged him, I respect it, but that 17 year old boy took a stand when I couldn't take a stand at his age. He took a stand and he pushed the red stick campaign that went across our nation. And that was not just for indigenous people, but that was to fight racism in a sport that needed change a long time ago. And for that, I acknowledge you, Logan. In today's world, there's bigger things to fight. We have to work together because in this world, there's global warning, there's poverty, there's homeless. We have no room for racism. We don't. <laughs> and racism has to go. And I, I, I'm glad we're all taking a stand together. My father always said, racism is just like a house fire. It's one thing to watch that house burn and say that's too bad for that family inside of it. That shouldn't happen to that family. But what are we gonna do about that family that's in that house fire? We have to protect them and save them. So whenever you see racism, act on it. Don't just say it's too bad, it's too bad he's going through that, it's too bad they're going through that. Act. And together, we can go places beyond our existence. We have to work together to move forward. And I was always for relationships. I've always said, through leadership inspires partnerships that develop into relationships that eventually become friendships. And today, I see a lot of leadership. I see a lot of people coming here taking a stand. Hopefully we can transpire that into partnerships, into relationships, and down the road, we could all be friends. And that's where we want to go, that's our goal. And we understand, Mi'kmaq, we've been here 13,000 years. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> We understand that you're not going anywhere. We don't have to go anywhere. But I'll tell you one thing that has to go, racism. Well, you thank you.
Rodney Levi. Chantel Moore. Aisha Hudson. Regis Kor Korczynski Paquette. Jason Collins. Everett Patrick. Stuart Kevin Andrews. Brianna Taylor. Ahmad Arbery. George Floyd. There is a lot of grief and pain in the communities who have lost their family members. I'd like to invite you to join me in a moment of silence to honor all those who have died for their families and for everyone who is affected by racial violence. Let us send them our prayers for strength and healing. Thank you. So uh, we're gonna move on to our closing speech, uh, closing statements. Uh, I did neglect to mention, uh, my name is Melanie McDonald. I am uh, participating in this rally from Port Hood. Uh, and I would like to welcome Katie Beaton, who's a resident of Mabu, and she has a few words she would like to say. Thank you. Thank you, Darnell, Sila, Stephen. Okay. And thank you to all of you for coming today. It matters that you are here. When we were organizing this rally, we heard some comments asking how the public lynching of a black man named George Floyd in Minnesota could, be, could possibly be connected to a small town in rural Cape Breton. It is far too easy for us to point a finger south of the border, shake our heads at the racism we see on the news. But it doesn't take much to see that racism exists and thrives across Canada, across Nova Scotia, and right here in Inverness County. We like to think that we are friendly, welcoming communities. And yet African Nova Scotians, Mi'kmaq and other indigenous people continue to face open, open discrimination and prejudice in our communities. They have been telling us about it for decades and we have not been listening. It is time that we listened. When we look at our history, we see how these same communities, our communities, were built through the dispossession and exploitation of Mi'kmaq and African Nova Scotian peoples. We were not taught this side of history in our school. It is time we learned. We all have a responsibility to take a good look in the mirror and ask ourselves what we are doing to dismantle racism in our everyday lives. In our institutions, in our workplaces, in our community organizations, in our families, and in our own hearts. It is time we showed up, not just when it's trending on Facebook, but every day. We have not been here, and we need to be because black and indigenous people are hurting. Whether it's through brutal acts of violence like the deaths of Chantel Moore, George Floyd, Ahmaud Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, and many, many more, or through systematic underfunding, economic oppression, daily microaggressions, system, or sorry, over, over policing and criminalization, white supremacy is killing people. It is not enough for us to simply not be racist. As people with white privilege, we continue to benefit tremendously from a society that was designed to
to exploit, denigrate, and disappear black people, indigenous people, and people of color while perpetuating white supremacy. It is, it is uncomfortable to say that we have benefited from racism when we do not consider ourselves to be racist. And yet, it is true. We must face this fact. But instead, we've invented many ways to uphold the status quo, to excuse our pangs of guilt, to feign a moral conscience, because we were busy, because we felt powerless to make changes in our lives and in our communities, because we didn't understand or we didn't want to know, but most of all, because the status quo suits us. It is long past time for us to step up. We need to get comfortable with the discomfort that comes with having not done enough. We must learn and we must do much better. And this is not about feeling guilt or shame. That's not useful to anyone. We are not responsible for what our ancestors might not have done or may have done. But we are responsible for what we do now. And we must recognize that it is not up to the victims of racism to end it. It is up to the perpetuators and benefactors of racism. It is up to us. So let today be the beginning. We might come to this several hundred years too late, but we cannot let our fear and guilt further perpetuate our apathy. We are not alone and we are not powerless. Let us commit today to ending racism in Inverness County, in Nova Scotia, and in Canada. And let's commit to holding one another to it. This means listening and learning with humility. This means respecting those who have been doing the work of anti-racism for decades, right in our backyards, and respecting their spaces. This means coming out in support when our Mi'kmaq neighbors need us to show solidarity. This means caring about missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. This means calling out racism when we see it, at the store, at the dinner table, online. This means getting involved politically and demanding better from our elected officials. This is the beginning. We want to see all of you again. Let's commit to working to this together. Thank you. And that brings our event to a close today. But before we go, we do have these yellow buckets around that you see marked donations. These are for a fundraiser for St. Philip's African Orthodox Church in Whitney Pier, um, presided over by the Reverend Phyllis Marsh. It's a central part of the black community in Cape Breton. St. Philip's cannot hold its main fundraising event this year, the Summer Caribbean Festival, due to COVID-19. So. We have talked about racism, but one of the flip sides of this is mutual support. It's a small thing, but it's something we can do right now. So we invite you to donate before you leave. And if you're watching online, we invite you to find the GoFundMe link on this event page where you can donate as well. This is our island, and we have relationships to build and a better future to work towards. Thank you. You can write to us at chne.television at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.